Hey, welcome everybody to Martinis with Scott, a show about winning momentum in life uh, and in business. Uh, thank you for joining me. Cheers. I know I'm drinking coffee this morning uh, because I'm doing a, uh, one of my unusual morning uh, shoots. But I hope you're having a martini or some other drink at Thursday at uh, 4 p.m. in the afternoon uh, as we as we usually do. Uh, so last week, I was at Navani Stainless, which is a Sinclair Range portfolio company um, and a turnaround, a corporate turnaround. And you could follow the turnaround journey, in fact, on the Martinis with Scott channel. Uh, there's several, several episodes and there will be more. So you can, uh, I, sorry, I was at Navani last week and I was doing a tour of the production facilities where we manufacture stainless steel sinks and strainers uh, and sell in largely in North America. And so I was doing the production uh, tour and I was taking a video. And then I learned that, that in fact, we had a professional videographer in to take a look at that factory. And so I was able to find that raw data it hasn't been the rock uh, film. It hasn't been edited yet. There was no voiceover on it. So you guys on the podcast uh, missed out because there was nothing to hear. Uh, but on the video version on YouTube, uh, there was a tour of the manufacturing plant of Navani Stainless, which I got a lot of feedback. People thought was pretty cool, which leads me into this week. Uh, yesterday, I did a virtual tour of a company that I am responsible for, director and officer of uh, in Colorado by the name of Globex Extraction. And so we're going to jump right to it. Uh, this week, we're going to do a guided tour of a hemp uh, processing facility. So you can see the, um, the manufacturing equipment, the capital expenditures, a bit of the process um, that goes into processing hemp with the idea of coming up with uh, CBD uh, isolate or um, uh, CBD oil of some sort for uh, as the end user, as the end user or the, uh, the product maker that's using the CBD uh, as they need for their production requirements. So it's a pretty cool tour. Um, and you, since you enjoyed the, the stainless steel manufacturing, I thought I would throw this up for you this week. And then next week, hopefully we're back to uh, regular shows. I've, I've been dying to talk to you about uh, failure and uh, positivity and how that relates to running a business and entrepreneurship. And so hopefully that'll be next week's topic, unless something jumps up more interesting in between. But I wanted to get this tour out to you uh, for today's show. So I hope you enjoy it. And, uh, and with that, if you like the content on YouTube, please subscribe. Um, we're on YouTube, Apple pod under the Martinis with Scott channel or an Apple podcast and Spotify, by the way, we will put this up as a podcast as well. And so you'll hear this part, but if you, you guys listening to the podcast, guys and gals listening to the podcast, want to see these videos, get to YouTube because that's where they are. All right. Enjoy the show. All right, so that's the outside of the, the facility. It's the area where Ashley works, the receptionist desk. Okay. That's the lobby. Um, this was all new since you uh, were, were out here, Scott. The cubicles are new, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we've got our HPLC set up in the office here, so it's out side of the uh the lab and the dirt and the, the warehouse what and does hplc uh, stand for high pr uh, pressure liquid chromatography okay so that's uh, that's Testing. where we're doing all of our analytics on yeah absolutely okay. yeah. and that's one that's uh running the hplc yeah <laughs> And that's Wolf. Wolf, this is Scott and Kabir. Hey, Wolf, how you doing? How are you? Good. So, so Wolf is running our production in our lab. And uh, so basically the product uh, comes in off the semi trucks through these doors here. And it's inventoried. We've got a pallet jack that uh, um, is over here yeah. that actually weighs the, weighs the hemp. We reconcile it. Put it on the lift to take it upstairs and hang on a sec so we have a we have a scale or there's a scale in the jack it's a scale on the pallet jack actually 
Okay. Oh, cool. So, all right. So we can reconcile that, um, and yep. then it goes upstairs on the lift to the inventory, and then uh, based on what we're, which contract we're working on, we'll bring a bag down at a time. So this is what the uh, biomass looks like. That's yep. milled. Um, so we do take some of the sticks out, which is what's happening here on the screen. Basically, getting the sticks and, and getting the dirt and the all kinds of other stuff that's in there out of it. So that we're who does the milling, material. Sean? Do we mill it? So most of it comes milled. Um, yeah. If we have to mill it. We're actually just using um, a little Toro uh, leaf um, mulcher. So we'll just mulch, okay. mulch it yeah, right yeah. out of that. Yep. Okay. And then you separate, take out the crap separate it. as best you can. Yep. And then the separated material ends up getting put into our socking station. So the filtered bags get stuffed down in the uh, PVC tubes and yep. then they uh, stuff them there. And then this is the the stuffed socks that are ready to be processed. Every sock has a QR code on it that's logged in that backbone system that uh, you have access to now. And then it's weighed and logged. Um, and they're actually checking to make sure that it's the right, um, the right diameter so that it doesn't go into the, the columns, which we'll enter into next. It's loud in there, so I'll do a lot of explanation out here. But uh, basically, we need to make sure that those socks are tight into the columns. Otherwise the propane will just run down the sides and we won't get a, a, a thorough extraction. So the yeah. socks shrink after they've been um, stuffed and put through the uh, propane uh, machine. Typically we get about three runs out of them before they start shrinking. And they're shrinking because there's a high pressure cycle that goes on in the propane when they're pushing um, pushing all the residual propane out of there and it heats them up. And so they're nylon and, and they end up shrinking a little bit. So what you'll see in here is the machine that uh, Scott, you saw before that's now operational. So this wall and all the uh, equipment out here was not here when you were here. It was not there. Out. Yeah, exactly. So it was all built, all the new electrical panels are there. Um, and what you'll see in here on the right side to the left side, you've got a supply tank it has about 400 uh, pounds of propane in it. They will load the machine every morning with about 100 pounds, and then they'll isolate it. So there's yeah. a, a isolation valve up there, and the propane that's in the machine will be uh, pushed through the uh, pushed through the uh, socks, recovered, and then pushed back to the front of the machine. And it's basically it's a closed loop type system. Um, so when I get in here, what you'll see is uh, 10 columns, and they're basically running five at a time, they'll do uh, five on one side and then they'll flip to the other side and they'll load and take the stocks out and you'll see some of that. Um, all the propane's being pushed down from the top of the column into the uh, bottom rail. And so you see the bottom rail when we go in there and that's being pushed to the recovery tank. And so that carries the liquid propane um, and the hash and it'll go yeah. to the recovery tank and they'll heat the uh, propane up and pull it back through a gas compressor to turn it back into liquid. And then the, uh, the hash will actually be collected in what we call the GD1, um, and you'll see in a minute. So I'll walk you through this real quick, um, and then I'll take you to the lab and the distillation station. That's the one. What are those uh, big pipes coming in? Is that uh, ventilation up top on the left? What was that? The big pipes up top on the left, they weren't there before. When you were inside, now on your right, right there.
Was that part of the ventilation? Yeah, so basically in that room on the left side, when I walked in, there's a supply, uh, a big supply um, coming from the outside uh, makeup air unit. Yeah. And basically you've got about 106 linear feet of air moving across that machine. And it's basically being sucked right back out by yeah, the yeah. Uh, room that's yeah. on the floor. And then okay. out through those big ducts uh, with your exhaust fans. Gotcha. Okay. We'll come into the, the lab side. So after that, uh, the hash that you saw on the floor um, is out of there. It actually will get put into drums and then thrown into these freezers. So they're putting it in there with uh, ethanol so that we can winterize it, which uh, basically we're mixing it with ethanol and putting it in a deep freeze to precipitate out the, the fats and the waxes or what they call the lipids. Yeah. So it'll spend a day in the freezer. Then after the freezer comes in the lab and we've got a couple different filter setups. Um, this is one of them that's uh, just about done. So you can see the, the fats and the waxes that are um, caked up there on the uh, filter paper. Yeah. And then the other filtration uh, or filter we have is this one over here, which is uh, a lot more efficient than, than the cheapener, uh, cheaper yeah. Buchner on the other side. That's our batch reactor that we're mostly just using to um, homogenize different uh, batches. So when we get um, a bunch of small batches coming off the uh, distillation equipment, um, we'll get them all tested and then we'll put them in there, mix it up and homogenize it. So we have one big batch, which will uh, make it easier to, to present COAs and test results for yeah. um, the product to be able to get it sold more efficiently. That's a road app that we use to get uh, the solvent off of the material. Um, or at least one of the devices. And then this is our falling film um, machine here that uh, basically will pull 60 gallons an hour of ethanol off of uh, the winterized crude. So we'll go through the filter, get the fats and waxes off, and then we'll have to get the crude back out of the ethanol or get the ethanol off the crude. And so that's yeah. what that machine does. And it basically pumps it into the keg down here on the back backside. Um, this is our- okay prep station for all of our samples and then this is the uh, pure flash machine this is another it's the the replacement for the cpc and it does eight times what the cpc does and it's got a a big column over here which they use for the separation and then of course the brain over here on the left side um yeah pulls the analytics gotcha okay so that's the lab area um, I'll take you upstairs to show you the distillation. So these are short path uh, distillation machines. Uh, basically the uh, rod or the uh, crude will go into the, the heated mantle and we're just gonna distill it. And so this flask is where the distillate's at. It's turned up until um, what they call the heads come off, which are all the terpenes and stuff, which is here and here. And then yep. once we hit to the right uh, temperature, then we actually end up with what they call the body of the distillate. And then this, this glass gets rotated down and it's catching here. Gotcha. These are a number of our batches. Again, everything's got their, their QR code so we know how to identify it. And there's all the hemp that we're storing. We're pulling from when we bring it downstairs. That's, uh, that's my stuff from California? Um, part of it. So part of it. The... 
This is our Delta 9, which is the big THC remediation uh, unit yep. that we recently purchased. Um, Looks so small for all that money. Yeah, it does look small. It uh, holds about 70 uh, kilos uh, at the most. And the crude basically goes in here. It's got a vacuum jacket to keep it insulated. And then um, this water stream basically acts as a big cold trap. So the THC that's being distilled off of it is being captured in the, in the waste stream and, and put into the bucket there. Yeah, gotcha. That's pretty much it, unless you want to see. I think that's that's all of it. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you. That was my first virtual tour ever. I like it. <laughs>